A reading from the book of Exodus. In those times, some people were in thirst of water and complained to Moses, saying, "Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock?" So Moses cried out to the Lord for help. "What shall I do with these people? A little more, and they will stone me." And the Lord said to Moses. Go before the people, along with you, the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the rod with which you struck the river, and go. I will be standing there in front of you upon the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. Moses did so in the presence of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of that place Massa and Meriba, because the Israelites quarreled there. And tested the Lord, saying, "Is the Lord amongst us or not?" The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith. We are at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him, we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we look forward with hope of God's glory, a hope which will not disappoint us, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us when we were still helpless. At the appointed time, Christ died for the godless. Indeed, you could hardly find anyone ready to die, even for someone righteous. Perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves His love for us, that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down in the well. It was about noon, and his disciples had gone into town to buy food. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, "Give me a drink." The Samaritan woman said to him, "You are a Jew. How can you ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jews does not associate with Samaritans." Jesus answered her, "If you only knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, 'Give me a drink,' you'd have been the one to ask, and He would have given you a living water." The woman said to him, "Sir." You do not even have a bucket, and the well is deep. How do you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus replied, "Whoever drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become a spring of water within." Welling up to eternal life, the woman said to him, "Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or keep coming here to draw water again." Jesus said to her, "Go, call your husband and come back here." The woman answered, "I have no husband." Jesus answered her, "You are right in saying I have no husband, although you have had five husbands." And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. Though people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem, Jesus said to her, "Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain 
nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation comes from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And that is the kind of worshipper the Father seeks. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were surprised that he was talking with a woman, though none of them asked, What do you want from her? or Why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and hurried back to the town to tell the people, Come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, have something to eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? But Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, In four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, Look around you and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already being paid for his wages and brought the grain for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here is the proverb holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap a harvest you have not labored for. Others have done the work and you have come to share the rewards of their labor. Many Samaritans of that town believe in him because of the woman who testified, saying, He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they begged him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. Many more came to believe in him, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that he is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.